Thank you. Thanks for having us. Good to be here. Uh, first of all, massive, massive love and gratitude to our very dear friend Brian May. Brother Brian May. For such a flattering introduction. We love you, mate, and uh, congratulations on the incredible success of the movie. Couldn't have happened to a nicer chap. Um, also, like to congratulate our uh, fellow inductees tonight. It's been a real honour to be able to share this stage with the likes of Roxy Music and Stevie Nicks and the Zombies, artists that we have admired from a distance for many, many years. All right, so down to business. Uh, we'd like to take this opportunity to acknowledge a few people and some significant moments that have played a very important role in getting this band to where it is today. Starting off with our parents. Now back then we were just a bunch of teenage wannabes living at home, dreaming the dream and uh, you know, so without their help and encouragement, it would be a lot tougher to be standing up here on this stage tonight. My mum, for example, taught me my first three chords when I was eight years old. I've learned two more since, and I've come to realize <laughs> you don't actually really need them at all. My dad, who lent us 150 pounds to make our first ever recording back in 1978, which was absolutely the launch pad for this very wild ride that we have been on ever since. Now that, <clears throat> that's, two, that's just two examples of what our folks did for us along the way. And uh, I could stand here all night with great tales of parental you know, support and what have you. Uh, but as basically, as a major significance, it goes without saying that um, without their, their help and their financial support or otherwise, things would have turned out very, very differently. So, thank you, moms and dads. Thank you very much, moms and dads. Another significant moment in this band's birth was the simple act of missing a bus, which is something that I did on uh, one August night in 1977. By deciding to walk home instead of uh, waiting for the next one, fate would have it that I would bump into a young kid who I knew to be a pretty good guitar player. That kid was a guy called Pete Willis. <laughs> Pete was the co-founder of this band and one of the best right hands in the business. Now, sadly, Pete couldn't be with us tonight, but I want to emphasize how very important Pete's role was in this band in the early days. He, he was a terrific player. He had a very mischievous sense of humor, but he brought many, plenty, plenty of great musical ideas to this band. And it was Pete, after a chance meeting in a college canteen, both reaching for the same guitar magazine, <laughs> introduced us to the late, great Steve Clark. Over the... Over the following 10 years, Steve made a massive musical contribution to this band. His incredible and unique riffs helped shape some of the most important songs that we will ever write. And it really does go without saying that we love him and that we miss him every day. Two gentlemen who helped take us uh, to a level that we could only previously have dreamt about were Cliff Bernstein and Peter Mensch. They formed Q Prime Management and they looked after us for the best part of 25 years. We will always appreciate the fact that Peter bankrolled this band for years until things started to take off. And boy, did they take off. But not before the most significant contribution that Peter and Cliff ever made, which was in introducing our music to our future producer, co-writer, and mentor, Mr. Robert John Mutt Lang. Thank you. 
Now, we first worked with Mott on an album in 1981, an album called High and Dry, which was a good record. But it was 1983 that saw us move into a whole new orbit with the phenomenal success of the album Pyromania. Where we were properly introduced to our new boss for the first time, our wonderfully loyal fan base. Without whom, we would not be up here tonight. For that, I have absolutely no doubt whatsoever. So thank you, thank you, thank you. You have stayed on board with us for the best part of the following 36 years and supported us through some tough times along the way. But those tough times have helped us make this band what it is today. It's solid, it, we're appreciative of who we are and what we stand for. Those songs written over the years were always our main priority. You only just have to check out our misguided fashion sense over the years and you will understand where I'm coming from here. And although it seemed that there was always a looming sense of trage tragedy around every corner, we just wouldn't let it in. But it is true. It did seem that every time that we made some musical headway, life would just knock us back down somewhat. Pyromania is a raging success. And then Rick, Rick has a life-changing accident. He survived it and came out the other side stronger. Rick Allen, everybody. <laughs> Hysteria gave us the global success that we'd always craved. But then we lost Steve. But we survived, and we came out the other side stronger people. Uh, and that's the way that it's always played out throughout our career. So let's face facts, people here. If alcoholism, car crashes, and cancer couldn't kill us, the 90s had no fucking chance. <laughs> so finally, I'd like to uh, just bring this into the now and thank some people who have been helping keep this beautiful machine on the road, hopefully for many, many more years to come. Our manager, Mike Kobayashi. Mike, I can love you, man. We took over the reins from Howard Kaufman, who looked after us from 2005 until his sad passing in 2017. How did an incredible job breathing new life into this band at a time when it could have gone either way? And Mike continues to do so. So thank you, Mike Kobayashi. <laughs> to our friends at Universal Records, past and present, especially present. <laughs> and to our families, to our wives, to our children, who helped keep us grounded. Honey, how much did that purse cost, really? They give us a good reason to keep doing what we do. <laughs> and last, but absolutely not least, my fellow bandmates here. We're not blood, but we're the closest thing to brothers that this only child has ever known.
I couldn't and I wouldn't want to do it without these guys. Thank you.